Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the Aviation Pro Channel. Today we're gonna take a look at the FMC of the Boeing 737-800. For this video we're gonna make a flight from Berlin Tegel to Amsterdam with the Air Berlin. Um, let's go and take a look in the cockpit. So guys, welcome to this uh, cockpit of this beautiful Boeing 737-800. And we're gonna open up the FMC. And we'll have here the main menu of the FMC as you can see. We'll first go to the identification page which will just show you the identification of the aircraft. But we uh, won't uh, use it right now because we don't have to fill in anything. Position page is used to align the IRS. So if you start up from Colmar Dark and you want to align the IRS, uh, you can do that here. But as you can see we have aligned the IRS already so we won't be using it now. The performance initialization page is the first page you want to fill. Um, we we'll start with the gross weight and the gross weight is the a total amount of weight of the aircraft, so that's the zero fuel weight plus the amount of fuel. Uh, I found out in the um, configuration manager of the iFly uh, add-on that we have a gross weight today of 60,835 kilograms. The gross weight is in either thousands of kilograms or thousands of pounds, so we have to divide this number by thousand and we'll have a gross weight of 16.8. As you can see, it automatically calculates the zero fuel weight, so that's the weight of the aircraft without fuel, and so that's 16.8 minus 5.3. Reserves is the uh, fuel reserve uh, which you want to have for this flight, and we'll use 1000 kilograms today. The cost index is uh, quite a strange number, many people don't know what it is. It's actually very simple, uh, it's an economical value. Um, which uh, determines the performance of the engine. If you enter a low value, the engines will give less performance, but the lifetime of the engine is larger. But if you enter a high value, you will have much more performance, but it also may destroy the engine a little bit. The value can, be can be between zero and 500. Um, for an airline like KLM, I believe they use about 30. Cruising altitude is um, for today uh, final 400, so we only have to fill in 400. You don't need to uh, do it like this. We only have to do 400. Get it in there, as you can see, it automatically selects flight level 400. Cruising wind um, for today. Well, that's just a random number. Actually, we'll use something like this. You can check it in any weather program. Then we have um, the outside air temperature, first of all, as you can see we have 15 degrees Celsius, so we enter 15 C, right here. And this uh, temperature is the static air temperature, the uh, aircraft calculates automatically, and the static air temperature is basically the temperature of the ambient air, uh, without uh, friction of air uh, calculated. Uh, the transition altitude for this air uh, Airport is 5,000 feet, so this is the point where we switch to the uh, local from the local QNH to the standard QNH of 1013. We press execute, and we'll see that the aircraft has automatically calculated this value. And we go to the N1 limit page. The N1 limit page uh, just determines the thrust setting for the aircraft for departure. And this is the highest thrust setting available, but we can also use lower values uh, in order to um, have less noise of the aircraft in case we might have, uh, in case we might have, uh, for example, noise abandonment procedures. But in this case, we don't have them, so we use the highest amount. Takeoff page, very simple. The uh, flaps setting, I usually use uh, flaps 10 or 15. Use 10 in this case. And as you can see, the FMC immediately comes up with the uh, V1, V rotate, and V2 speeds. First we're going to enter the center of gravity, this is the point where if the aircraft would be stabled on that point, it would be stabled and um, you can find this uh, value in the uh, configuration manager of the iFly add-on. Our center of gravity in this case is 30.8%. We automatically get a new trim value, so this trim setting we need for departure and don't forget to confirm the V1 V rotate and V2 speeds because uh, if you don't confirm them they won't show up 
on your displays. So make sure to confirm them by just clicking them and highlight them. Go to the routes and um, it's very uh, simple basically. We have the origin airports, well we have Tegel airports, runway, it's gonna be uh, 26 right I think. Then we have the destination airport, which is of course Amsterdam. Flight number, uh, you can do anything you like, what, just what your flight number is. Then we'll go to the departure arrival page first, which will show us uh, the uh, departure routes from uh, departure routes from uh, Berlin and the arrival routes at Amsterdam. So we click departure. We select the runway for departure, and our first waypoint of the our flight plan is uh, Brain. So we use uh, the Brain to November in this case, and it depends really on what ATC will clear you for. Then, if you selected this, we'll go back to the legs page, and we'll see all the legs of the SID. This is a very simple SID, actually, um, not many uh, strange things involved. And from here we're going to fill in the rest of the waypoints. Um, we have Guksu. HLZ, which is in uh, VOR, probably. Yeah, it's a VOR. And we have Atos. And then we have DLE. As you can see, if the uh, FMC detects uh, waypoints with the same name or uh, VOR DMEs, you can select it here, which one you want. So in this case, we want the VOR DME of 115.2 MHz, so we'll select that one. So uh, we're going to fill in the rest of the waypoints. It's relatively easy, you don't have to uh, pay attention to the altitudes yet. Some and Norku. So Norku is the uh, final waypoint and uh, of our flight plan, and this is the waypoint where we'll start our arrival route. And we go to the departure arrival page again. We select arrival at Amsterdam, and we'll have the uh, runways first. Um, we'll. Uh, well, let's say we're gonna land on runway one at right, the ILS of runway one at right. We select ILS one at right. We have the Norku two alpha arrival, and transition is basically um, the standard route you will follow to the ILS approach. Usually, if there's ATC, you will get vectors from ATC, but if there's not ATC, you can um, use a transition to automatically fly to the uh, ILS. So we use uh, transition R tip. We'll go back to the next page again, and we're gonna check the altitudes and the waypoints. So they all are correct right now. We're gonna act click activate and execute, and the FMC will come up with uh, new flight levels, as you can see. So we'll have a straight climb, basically to flight level four zero, and then. Uh, We'll descend further to Norku, and we we'll should have a pleasant and smooth flight. So, as you can see, it's very simple to um, enter the route in the FMC. Um, we now go to the climb page, and this the these are the pages for the VNAV uh, of the aircraft, vertical navigation. And we're gonna check this. Um, I'm not sure what everything uh, means, but the cruising altitude, make sure you have that uh, entered. The speed restriction, uh, we want to be at 250 knots below flight level 100, um, which is uh, the standard for Europe. The cruise page, which will show you the maximum uh, flight level, but also the optimum flight level. And the speed we're going to be flying to do today is 0.784 Mach, so that's a uh, 1 Mach is the uh, speed of sound, so we will be about uh, 
from the uh, away from the speed of sound. And we'll also see the amount of fuel we'll have at our arrival, which is uh, 2.7 thousand today. The send page will um, is the uh, also a speed restriction, as you can see, but we uh, won't be using it right now. Progress page we will see the progress of the flights, the estimated arrival time in Zulu, of course, and again the fuel at several waypoints. So that's basically uh, it for the large part. We've now filled in the uh, performance initialization page. Uh, the takeoff is fully uh, checked and completed. The route is completely filled. The legs page is checked. And if you uh, might have a uh, re-clearance to, uh, to your destination, you can always select the barge again and select one of the other SIDs. Same uh, thing for the uh, arrival routes, of course. I will go a little bit further to the uh, last menus of the FMC. We have here the main menu again. The legs page, as I showed you before, the barge and arrival page. The hold page is... Uh, very uh, handy page when you have to hold at a certain uh, waypoint. It's uh, simply, let's say we have to hold at R tip for our arrival. Simply select our uh, R tip out there, and we have to fill in some more information. And uh, but this information you will get by FMC, or you can find on the chart. Uh, further, we have the N1 limit page. We already discussed that. The fixed page is a very handy tool as well. Uh, we can get some information about uh, a certain fix in our flight plan. So if you want to have some information about Shipple, we're going to select Shipple. If you are DME, and we're going to uh, can enter a radial and a distance from that VRDME and uh, you will see that um, displayed right here during your arrival so that's basically it uh, it's quite simple of course if you know how to fill in the FMC of a Boeing 737 you'll also be able to uh, fill them in for, for the rest of the uh, Boeing series uh, Airbus and Fokker and McDonnell Douglas, they are all a little bit different, so um, the ba very basics are the same, but um, yeah, you might uh, not um, be able to understand everything. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I'm going to execute again, and we'll have a beautiful flight plan set up for Berlin to Amsterdam. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you uh, learned from it. As you can see, it's very easy. If you want to have more information about the FMC, you can always find it in the manual. I uh, unfortunately don't have enough time uh, available here on YouTube to explain really everything thoroughly. But uh, these are the most important things. And, uh, and all the other stuff uh, you want to know, you can find it on the internet or in the manuals of your add-on. So that was it for today, I thank you very much for watching, please uh, subscribe if you liked this video and of course uh, stay tuned for more. Uh, also to stay tuned with the channel please take a look at my Facebook page uh, where I'll show you uh, everything about the upcoming videos. So thanks for watching again and hope to see you next time.